Elsa Kodacek was my great-grandmother on my father's side. I didn't know much about her when I was growing up. I knew that her son, my grandfather, had uh, left Austria right before the Holocaust, but I really didn't know much about Elsa at all. While I knew that my great-grandmother had art, I didn't know what art. And so our family was contacted by Sotheby's about this Sheila painting that she had owned. On the one hand, it made sense, and on the other hand, it was really remarkable that she had owned this painting. It was obviously a cherished part of their home. One of the remarkable things about City at Twilight is its history. Um, in 1913, it was painted by the artist Egon Schiele, and the first sale of the painting was brokered by the artist Gustav Klimt to a young architect called Hubert Jung. Tragically, he was killed in the last year of the war in 1918, and then the painting passed on to another collector before being sold to Elsa Kodacek in 1928. When Elsa bought this painting, uh, it was still regarded as avant-garde, one of the things that struck me when I was reading through Elsa's correspondence with her children was how remarkable it was that a 43-year-old widow, the widow of a successful banker in Vienna, would go out and buy herself this extraordinary modernist work of art in 1928. I didn't know that my family had been so directly impacted by the Holocaust until I moved to Philadelphia where my uncle lives. When I got there, my aunt suggested that I go through this family archive that had been in the basement for many years. The letters had Nazi insignias on them and I couldn't read them because they were in German. I found a, a German friend to translate a couple of the letters for me. So I called somebody at the uh, Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. And, and to my surprise, he said, well, why don't I come to Philadelphia and we can look through them and talk about them without really knowing what was of importance in the letters. I found one from 1946 that was very thick, and I thought, well, obviously there's something pressing in here. In 1946, Elsa wrote to her daughter and her son telling the story of what had happened to her during the war years. She told about how in August 1940, she'd received two body blows. First, her mother had passed away, and secondly, she received a requisition saying that she had to give up her own apartment in 14 days to an SS officer who was going to move in with his family. So she put the Sheila painting, a day bed, and two chairs in the apartment upstairs with her neighbor, Aunt Sylvia. In 1941, uh, she got a notice that she uh, was going to be deported. She uh, decided that rather than be deported, that, that she would put into play this plan she had with several friends to go into hiding. So on October 16th of 1941, the day she was slated to be deported, she went instead to her friend's house, the Hines, and they hid her in their house. She spent several years in hiding there. One day she received a visit from Aunt Sylvia, who she'd left her precious Sheila with. And Aunt Sylvia said that she'd sold the Sheila against Elsa's wishes to pay back some of the debts which Elsa owed to her for having supported her after she'd lost her pension as a Jew. So she survived for several years in hiding with the Heinz until one day uh, Mr. Heinz came home and a group of SS officers were with him and she heard them all come in through the front door and she heard them rattling around the cabinets in the kitchen and she kind of froze in the back. She decided to, to take the chance and to run or to sneak past the SS officers and they didn't hear her. She had arranged to meet a friend of the family called Aunt Sylvia in case something happened to her at the Heinz house. So she ran to the point where she was going to meet Aunt Sylvia and waited outside for her for a lot of the day. She came to get Elsa and they walked across uh, the city together back to Elsa's own home where Aunt Sylvia had been living in the upstairs apartment with the SS officer living downstairs. She hid in the corner of the upstairs apartment behind a tailor's dummy in a closet of sorts and uh, would watch this SS officer from the window. Um, he brought his family and he also would bring the belongings of Jews that had been killed and she saw that these things were carried by Jews with badges on. 
The subject of Zidia Twilight is an imagined view of Sheila's mother's birthplace, which is Chesky Krumlov or Krumau in the Czech Republic. He was painting in the studio, probably from photographs, and he was trying to create an imagined, almost dreamlike city. He depicts emotion through a townscape. It's not a, not a literal landscape, but it's an emotional landscape. One of the extraordinary things about City at Twilight is the condition of the canvas. It's as if it just left the artist's easel yesterday. Because it's been out of public eye for 50 years and more, nothing's ever happened to it. So you can still see the artist's pencil marks, you can still see the bright colors he applied to show the lights coming on all over the city, and it's in the most incredible, pristine condition. I think one of the extraordinary things about working on a painting with history like this is how, how much depth it gives to the painting itself. Because the person who buys this painting won't just buy a masterwork by Egon Schiele from 1913, he or she will also be buying an incredible story, a story of survival and a story of redemption. For my family, this has been an emotional experience. Our family has a lot of pride about everything we've learned about Elsa through this process. The Sheila painting connects us to them in, in a new way because it sort of surfaced organically through its own path back to us. And I think that this is an opportunity that we all see to understand the story better and to kind of remember these relatives. In a way, an artwork is nothing without the chain going back to where it started on the artist's easel.